Hello everyone. Good evening. Welcome to Piccadilly Stampin'. I'm Pamela Pick and this is my husband, Bill Pick. Hello. So come on in and join us. Mm -hmm. It takes just a moment for the notice to go out, so we'll just give it a moment and uh, I don't know what happened. Oh, did you refresh it there? Yeah. I'll do that while you're trying to get in. And we'll get this going. Hi, France. Let me turn the sound off. Is that off? No. No, that is. Okay. Here we go. Hi, France. Hi, Jean. Oh, there's two Jeans. Jean Shute and Jean Orway. Mm -hmm. Hi, Beverly. Hi, Beth Ann. From Philly. 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 That's usually what you say, so I said it. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to just try to straighten this so you guys avert your eyes for a minute. Yeah, don't look straight at the camera. <laughs> we're going to tilt our heads left and Did right. Did I get it straight? It looks straight. Oh, it's a little crooked, but I guess that's how it's going to be. Gonna so be welcome, welcome, welcome. Are you guys loving summer? Hi, Debbie from Houston. I think that we kind of lucked out in fireworks this year. The city had some and then um, we're, our neighbors were flying some off and we could sit right out on our deck and see the fireworks this year for those who are joining us from the United States. It was extremely pretty. I liked it. I'm very lucky. I've had dogs in the past that were scared of fireworks, but Izzy did really good. She didn't have too much troubles, did she? Uh, I don't think she heard them. So let's get going. Um, just so you know, I have this out there because I put kind of an informative about the different promotions uh, this month. Sign up for my newsletter if you'd like to know about those. Um, it is the easiest, if you are using a mobile device, it is the easiest to um, uh, actually go on a computer. But if you go on a mobile device, because you can do it right here on Facebook, but for some reason it's it's a little bit harder. If you just go to uh, piccadillystampin.blogspot.com and click on the link, um, it will take you right to it, and that's the easiest way if you're on a mobile. Um, be sure to like and follow us and if you're new here, and I'm going to do the rest of the announcements afterwards. Um, time for a drawing. It is time for a drawing, isn't it? So, each week I do a card. Do I have all the lights on? Oh, this, let's add some light. Yeah, there we go. There we go. There's some more light. <laughs> Um, and this was the card that we made last week. It's so stinking cute. It's the easiest uh, fun fold, I think, because you only have this one fold. And um, But I think it was really cute. So um, this was used with some online exclusives that actually, if you're in mountain time, tonight at midnight, will go live tonight, these uh, fl floral dyes. And some other things that we're going to be using tonight. So I took everybody's name who shared my video to their wall. Let me shake it up here. And I'm going to do a drawing for these two cards. So Bill, will you reach in and grab two? Uh, one and two. Are they stuck together? Did you get three? I got two. Okay. I, it, I thought it looked like you got them stuck. <laughs> no, one was folded. Oh, yeah. I Yeah. Okay. Laura Land. Okay, Laura. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. I know your address, so I'll send that out and to you. Beverly Folk? Yes, you said it right. Beverly Folk, and I saw her on here, so I have her address too. I will get these sent out to you this week. Um, let's move this out of the way, and let's get this demonstration going, because there's kind of a lot in this one, and I'm really excited about it. So... One of the online exclusives that will be available for you guys tomorrow is this horse and sleigh bundle. It is July, so you can do your holiday cards. You know, it's not too early to start, tomorrow. honestly. Tomorrow. Mm -hmm. That means you're staying up late tonight, huh? Yes, I am. <laughs> I'll be staying up to get my order in because there's a couple of things. There is this little truck punch that I've seen that I think is going to be super popular. Let me just say, if you're into um, starting your holiday cards early, which I am because I do like a hundred and 
I think it's up to 130 now. Mm. Yeah. Um, so when, um, so, you know, July is kind of a, a good time to start them. Um, but uh, there's a truck punch that I think is going to be super popular and I want to get it before. I hope there's no like uh, non-orderable status on that. So I'm going to be waiting up to get that. But anyway, this is the horse and sleigh bundle and it does have more dyes than what it shows here. It is stinking cute. And I have that just I just love this card. Maybe I'm overselling it, but I love it. And when you love something, that's all that really matters. It's a very cute card. Yeah, it is. I see you've been posting it st stunning all week. Yeah. So I am going to be using a die from the Stylish Shapes just for the largest flag die. So I wanted to show you that. Also, you know, if you buy the bundle together, you do get a 10% discount. And there's actually some more discounts that are happening this month and then it comes with some DSP that you can order also this stuff is like I've done a few cards if you can't tell um, it's like these scenes which makes this so easy these this this card is not it's a little bit of a fun fold just like the last card but it's so stinking easy there's just a lot of components to it um, but there's all this beautiful paper in here. This one's like looking like you're looking down. I've seen people do some absolutely stunning stuff. Like this one's very cute. So put a big circle and a cross on it. Sight in on the deer. No, Bill. And you're not talking loud enough that they can hear it. Okay. And that's where I get the annoying comments. So no. Um, so let's find the paper I want to use tonight. While I'm here. Okay, this one. I like this because I just love the color uh, palette in this with that kind of blue, teal, aqua green. So that's kind of my favorite color that um, Stampin' Up! has. Right now I'm really into the Lost Lagoon, if you guys haven't used that. Oh, with the pretty peacock. So pretty. And guess what? We're going to be using that tonight with this. So let me I just ripped my bag. So this paper, and then it also has, this is in the new, it, these are called adhesive back snowflakes. When I first saw these, there's white, copper, and gold, and there's two different sizes. And when I first saw these, I thought, what, who's going to have gold or copper? Let me tell you, when you do it with the DSP, oh my gosh. And we're going to be doing that tonight too. So let's get started on what we've got. I get my stamp pack out. I'm trying to figure out where I want to start. Um, let's start with the base. You want to start with the base or do we want to get the stamping in? Uh, we should probably do that. Let's get the stamping out of the way because then it's always fun to pull them together. So this is the stylish shapes. Um, this is the largest flag. So we're going to be using this tonight and then we're going to be using the horse and sleigh when I stamp it. So let's do a little stamping and some coloring. I want to use, I want to use the memento. I'm going to use the early espresso. So this card has got a really rich flair to it. Is that the correct terminology? A rich flair? Sounds right. It It's not, I'm using, you know, s some of these in colors here and some of the new colors. Let's get this good and inky in this color. Maybe I'll do better this way. Yeah. We got a little bit more. There we go. Okay. I should use the stamp and pierce mat underneath. The reason why is because when you're stamping an image that you want it to come out. Now what was that? Um you can you know, our red rubber stamps have a little sponge on them. And so when you're using the photopolymer, the clear stamps, um, this gives a little bit of give so that you can press that image down. And I like to let that kind of adhere. Okay, not as good as I wanted it to be, but it'll work. All right. So we'll start there, and let's start with some blends. And 
This is going to take me just a bit, but let's start. This is the SU-800. It's a little bit darker than the lightest skin tone, which I like that they want I, because I'm making kind of a warm, rich um, scene here. So I'm just going to do this for their face. You can do whatever color you want. We've got a lot of different skin tones, and I'm going to act like he doesn't have a glove on. So start with that one. And then I have, uh, let's see, I'm going to do this. I'm going to start with the sleigh. So this is a new color. This is copper clay in the light and the dark. Now everybody does theirs a little bit different. I like to start with the darker color using the brush end. You do have a bullet end and a brush end. And I'm going to go around and I'm just going to color the sleigh in kind of um, around this. Well, let's just do it. So I'm going to come around this image and don't worry about being so perfect because we're going to blend this. And I'm also going to go around the bottom. And you let me know if there's any questions or anything, Bill. Okay. Okay. Hi, Madison. Hi, Madison. Cindy and Jean and... He's over here greeting everyone as they're coming in. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So then I'm going to take that light and I'm going to go right into that dark with doing like some circly moves. Go right into it and pull that color out. And you'll see how it kind of blends them in. And I love how this gives like that rich kind of... um. What color wood is this, Bill? Is this like... Walnut-y looking. Mm, maybe a maple. Maybe a maple. Okay. So you can see how you've got the dark into the light. And if there's an area that you're not quite sure of, you can come back in. I did grab the light, yeah. Come back in and feather it out. It's that simple. Now, that was the um, copper clay. This is one of the end colors this year. I highly suggest it. I really, really liked it. So let's go on to the horse. And on the horse, I'm going to do him. I wanted him to be in a brown, but I don't want him to be the star of the show, believe it or not. So I'm going to do him a little bit different. And I'm going to use the, the light crumb cake and the dark crumb cake. I am going to be using the brush tip end, just it's my preference, but I'm going to do the whole thing here in this uh, light crumb cake. And just kind of some circling motions. Don't get too caught up in the process. It's very relaxing. I mean, I do like to do it and enjoy it. But don't get so caught up in the process that you're not getting your cards done or you feel frustrated with it. Enjoy it a little bit and color it in and have fun with it. So then with him, I'm going to stop because i got a large portion of him done. I'll come back to this color. But then I'm going to come in with the dark. And I'm going to do, Stampin' Up! has done the work for me. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to do some of this as the darker areas on his chest here. And I might even do a little bit underneath here because you know that's going to be darker. It's the underside of him or her, I guess. And then I'm going to come back with that marker and I'm going to just blend that in and out. So there's two ways of doing it and I do it different for different colors, I think. There's no right or wrong. Um, I know that there's a lot of people who are really into it and can do very detailed coloring stuff. I don't have the patience for that. Go ahead. What was your question? Um, the question is, when is the stamp set coming out? That's tonight. It's It comes out tonight, midnight mountain time. And... Um, that it'll be released. 
is it an online? It's an online exclusive, so you will not find this in a catalog. This means you have to go online and look at it. When you go on and you see what's new, it'll take you to the online exclusives, or you can go on to get just to the online exclusives, and you can put, um, uh, I think it's search products, and then it'll actually say online exclusives. So you won't see it until midnight mountain time. So I'm in central time zone, which means that that's not until like uh, 1 a.m. for me. Bill knows well because I get up. And I'm going to make just the bottom of this hair here just a little darker by his foot. And maybe just a little here. Staggered. And I'm going to pull these up and work that out because you're, you're like blending it out. All right. Do I want to do any more? For now, I don't. I might come back to him. Peeps. Let's see how he... Any more on your peoples? On my peeps. Oh, well, they've got white blankets. Yes, yes, I'm going to be doing them too. I'm going to go back in with the um, the dark gray granite, and I'll probably use the bullet end on this because I just want to do a little bit. I don't want him to be the star here. I really am going to do that slay in those people. And then I'm going to go in here, and I don't want his feet to show, so I'm going to use the light gray granite, but I'm going to do his hoofs just a different color. So he's not as showy. I've seen some of these colored up showy, but he's not as showy. Because I'm going to bring out another in color. Have you guys seen this? I go back and forth on mauves in general, but this one is a kind of a deep mauve. It's called Moody Mauve. And I'm going to use this, and I'm going to take the dark side, and I'm going to use that brush tip end. And I'm going to do just a couple down here right here on the bottom because it's going to be darker there and then Stampin' Up! has some here and maybe I'll do this little piece here and his jacket that he's wrapped up in kind of there. I'm just going to do a couple little marks and then I'm going to go back in with the light and I'm going to color this all in because they're all wrapped up in this nice little blanket. Now, I've done one of these where, uh, hold on, I need to get it all. I think that's it. I've done one of these where I've done different colors on here, but I decided on this one, I, I want to make them that slay the focus, and so I'm gonna do their hats. They're all the same color. And you'll understand when you see this pulled together. And then this is all I'm doing on that. Okay. I think. What do you think? I love it. Pretty easy, right, guys? So now I'm going to pull this off. And line it up. So this right here is going to be the star of the show. So we're going to cut that out. But before we do, let's go on to the next piece. We're going to need Versamark. We're going to need our uh, Emboss Buddy. And we want to go over this to, um, so that the oils on your hands and stuff don't attract the embossing folder. If you've never done this before, this is one of my favorite techniques ever. And I'm going to use the sentiment, not this sentiment, that will go on the inside. I'm going to use this one. It is uh, wishing you a season of cheer. So we'll put the stamp back. And we're going to get this all nice and, and inked up on this Versamark. This is a watermark, kind of a gluey thing, so that the um, embossing powder will stick to it and stick that down right on top. Give that a good press. There we go. Isn't that font awesome? I love that. And then white embossed powder. Now, I'm gonna start 
teaching a few tips here, but I keep my embossing powder. I like white, if you haven't noticed. I've got like three cans of it in here. And it's my most used, more than gold or silver. Um, I think it looks so great on colored cardstock. So I keep it with just a little spoon. I think it's the easiest way. We do have special, um, like, um, a kit if you don't have anything and you just want to pour it back into the same jar. Okay, let me get the my M my heat tool. So this is a two setting heat tool and I'm going to go ahead and just hit it on hot and I'm going to try to emboss this underneath so you guys can see the process as best I can here. You want to move it around on this paper, let that heat up and you'll see it go to white. There we go. Flip it around. It would get shiny and white. Now, embossing powder does go bad. I don't know if you guys know that or not. So, every couple years you may need to repeat, like throw it out when it starts to break up. This is pretty good. And so, on this one, I'm going to do that largest from the stylus shapes. And I'll get another piece of washi tape off here. And then we can run these through together. So I'm gonna move my uh, Stampin' Mat there and I'm gonna pull out the silicone mat. Now this is great for gluing, but I'm using it to hold my little mini Stampin' Cut emboss machine into place. So we'll start with this image. Let me grab. You want to have your base plate, your cutting base, and then another acrylic. So one, two, and two. I always keep one more for cutting. So we're going to set this on here. Having this just be a little bit like the letter, capital letter E, if you have it just a little staggered, you're going to have better results running this through. So we're going to go ahead and place it on here. Start it till you see that handle start to move, which kind of grabs it. Wait a second. Kind of does. There we go. And then, sorry I'm rocking everything. Run that through. And then we're going to take our Slayers. Wasn't that an 80s rock band, Slayer or something? Yes, it was. <laughs> well, I mean horse and sleigh. Okay, here we go. And we're going to run and then grab the top and run that through. So now that's all the die cutting that we have on this. The rest we're going to need trimmer for so we'll set this aside and fold this up this is great if you have small space to be able to um, work okay let's pull this off now the hard part of the demonstration is done so there we go wishing you a season of cheer and then this one And it's our sleigh. So I'll move these aside and then let's keep going. All right. So now we're going to, you're going to need your trimmer for the next part. And I'm going to move these over here. Okay. Actually, maybe I should pull it all out. I've already pre um, cut a piece of gold foil. So this is part of the sleigh. In fact, let's just do this. Let's just finish this one section. So I'm gonna use my silicone mat. This is to make that come out with a gold flare on it. And oh. my, you like that? 
<laughs> so it has that cut. So I want to give my first tip tonight is I usually have two bottles of multi-purpose glue going at the same time. One is a little bit more used and one is more new. Um, my favorite way to keep them is in, this is an old votive cup holder. The other way is you can get a, um, if your husband has a PVC pipe, like fitting, you can do that. So I like to keep the heavier one in the heavy um, votive holder and then the lighter one. Oh, wait, I did that backwards. Well, anyway, the lighter one, this is my tip. So when I am doing these projects that have very fine little areas, um, I like to have the mat. You can sit here and glue it this way if you want to. But I like to be able to hold this sucker and it, since from the move I still haven't grown fingernails back but and just put it on in between the areas like this so the the one that has the less glue in it it's easier to not go and have a whole big bunch fall out did that make sense to you Bill? it did <laughs> could you use a dauber? You could use a dauber, which is a way that I used to do quite frequently, but for something this little, I don't. I also tend to use my fingers a lot, which means that they get gluey and sticky. So have a rag around. So then you can just put this right on top. Now, these would be cards that, this isn't a hard card or anything, but this would be a card that maybe is for someone, you know, you're really close to because there is a lot of things to do on this card. So now you've got that beautiful sleigh which just jazzes that whole sleigh up and I think the sleigh is awesome. So that's that piece. I don't want to lose that. I'm going to put that there. I've got a card base here. Now this is cut, this is an eight and a half and eleven, cut at four and a quarter so that you get the long way and then you can fold it in half or you can score it. I myself have a better job of folding than scoring. I don't know why that is, but if you take your two fingers to make sure each end and your thumb are at the top, put your fingers in the middle and come back with your thumb, you tend to get a perfect area. I don't need this right at the moment. I will again, but okay, so this doesn't look like a fun fold yet, but it, it'll kind of be. You'll see. So we've got that. You're going to need two pieces. Now this is the Lost Lagoon. This is um, Pretty Peacock, which is really a dark bluish green. And it goes, it pairs very well with Lost Lagoon. In fact, we looked at this. This is the color, I think, of what this office ended up being, Bill. We went and put these papers together. So you'll need two of these cut at, oh, well, mine aren't cut the same. So let's see what I got here. Uh oh. Yeah. It would it should be four. That's four. Is this four? We may have to cut another one. By five and a quarter. This one's correct, so this one isn't. We're gonna have to cut another one. Because I need a bigger piece, not a smaller. Um, four by five and a quarter for two of the pretty peacocks. And as soon as I can get that to release, here we go. We'll cut another one. I'm going to start at five and a half. So four by five and a quarter. So you'll need two pieces of that. And that can go in my little scrap dish. And we'll put these away for later. You'll need a piece of white that's cut. Let's make sure I got this right. Three and seven eighths, yep. By five and an eighth, I did. You'll need that piece of white. And then you're gonna need your DSP. Now this, to me, is the star of the show. So I want this. My card is gonna go the long way because this is pretty long. So for this to be on my card, which can you see how easy this is once you get that? It just... The paper does it for you. So I know that this will be the long way and this will be the short way. So if this is going to be the short way and this is what I want showing, I'm going to do three and seven eighths on the DSP. 
by five and an eighth. Okay. Now, don't get rid of this piece with the tree on it. I loved it. I wanted to incorporate it. This, you know, even though this doesn't, maybe you can use it, but you still have a beautiful red piece that you can use for something else. So we'll set that aside. All right, let's start with some of our layers here. So I said, don't get rid of, let's actually get our early espresso. We're going to bring this back out. Um, I want to layer the white onto the pretty peacock. And I want to use this piece on here. And since they were cut the same measurement it's just going to fit on here and I decided which side I wanted it and I really did want it on the uh, right hand side and you'll see when you get when I get this card put together are there any questions I feel like you're quiet and well, I'm just watching okay I right. love the colors yeah the colors are gorgeous it's very rich especially when you add the moody mauve to it and play around with your colors. This could be done in other colors. There's other papers in here. Now I'm going to adhere this down onto the Lost Lagoon, which is about as close to, nah, I think, I think my other, I think my um, Bermuda Bay was brighter. So this is only going to give just the teeniest, tiniest little border on here. It gives like a 1 8 inch, 1 16 inch type border on it all the way around. I love it. Now with that early espresso, I'm going to add uh, and a happy new year on the inside. And I want to have this a little higher. I don't want it right dead center. I need my mat so I can get a good impression. You better get going the right way. I do have it the right way. Oh, it didn't look it. It didn't look it? It does now. Okay. So give that a good press. There we go. And Happy New Year. I think I need, I really need someone who will just come and re-ink all of my, my, Okay, now this is actually going to be on the inside of the card. So we're going to place this down on the inside. I like the green glue because it lets me kind of move it around so I can center what I was doing. And actually, a couple on my downline... They always decorate inside, outside, upside down on their cards. And so now I'm kind of starting to do it too. All right. Then on this other piece, which is going to be the front of the card, I'm going to take that same uh, four by five and a quarter and the three and seven eighths by five and an eighth piece of DSP. And I'm going to put this down on it. We're going to adhere these together. So the card is pretty simple. Okay. All right. Now we're going to adhere this to the front. And I bet you're going, how is this a fun fold? Well, you'll see. It's slightly a fun fold. Just kind of like last week's was slightly a fun fold. But I love this. But it identifies as a fun fold. <laughs> there you go. I absolutely love this whole bundle. I cannot stress enough. I think that... This is going to be primarily what I'm going to be doing this year. I'm not even going to fib about it. Okay, I have a scrap piece of um, Lost Lagoon, and this is cut at one inch, and, oh, it's about three and a quarter inch. So I'm going to bring out my very best trio punch, because this is just a scrap, but I want this to kind of go to an edge, so I'm going to cut with this and I'm going to flip it over 
and line it up so you push it in and back and I've got a, a perfect little point there now you don't have to use this one if you don't want to we also have for one inch we have a banner but um, I had that was the first thing in my hand so on my horse here I'm I wanted this little bit more to go back I want to glue this on the back of this horse and I wanted to have a little bit more firmness to this so I can push this all the way back to there so using some green glue I'm gonna do that this is called Tombow multi-purpose liquid glue but <clears throat> because I want this to be on my horse as far as I can now I have just a little bit of smooch here so let me get this off it kind of squeezed out all right so let me see if this is straight when I do this it's a little bit off so I need to kind of move it a little bit farther down let's see like that use the grid paper to kind of get that in there because he's gonna go on the front but I'm gonna make an arm for him so what I'm gonna do is that little scrap of paper I want most of this scene to show so I'm just gonna fold that okay I'm just folding it so when you do that it gives you kind of the size because let's face it this is just a little bit thicker I've got one two three four layers there one two three layers there so this is a little bit thicker card so it may cost you an extra 15 cents except for I don't know they're raising the rates again I think so I'm gonna come here now that I have that and I'm gonna use the score tool on the trimmer and I'm gonna set this in the track and do just a light little score and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this kind of up towards the top and that first little tick mark there is 1 16th of an inch so I'm gonna put that down and I'm just gonna do it again this gives just the teeniest little can you see that I don't know if that shows Bill it's, I'm seeing a little bit. it's just it gives just a little just gap a little, there yep okay good deal so now when I put this on here I need to look at where I want that sleigh to lay and I am literally gonna just put some glue I would love to use my stamp and seal and if anyone uh, um, stamp and seal plus but I can't find it so what uh, yeah to it up here on the counter now Bill are you gonna tell him what happened today I was yeah, I all upset because I could only find my small blending brushes and I went searching through everything where are my large blending brushes and um guess on what the table. they were actually they're on the shelf I didn't see them so now I've got this coming this way here's another tip that I'm gonna give you isn't this cute this is cute so far right but I cut out another one because I want this to have a little stability and who wants to see the back of that so I cut out another one in the um, uh, Lost Lagoon and I'm just gonna stick some glue down here on this like so it's so weird watching you do it upside down <laughs> and then I can just put it right on here now what you see there is the is the gold cutout so just kind of line it up and and I would suggest the the green glue or the Tombow liquid glue for this because so the gold cutout is what you're seeing on the white on this side but so what it's plus this makes it a little bit firmer because if people are going to be opening this and showing people oh look what Pam made for me you know so here you go that's why why I did that 
um, it just gives a little more stability to this having this little arm flap. Isn't this adorable? Like seriously, Bill, you were like, this is stunning. Okay, so let's do, I'm going to take the copper clay, which is what I used here. And I think that is just, I think it's a really gorgeous brown. We haven't had this orangey brown in a while. And I'm going to cut off a piece of this ribbon. This is the, I don't know the name of it yet, copper clay. And it is a three eighths inch textured ribbon. It does have a texture to it. I'm going to cut this off and I'm going to kind of look where I want this to lay. So see how I have this one going this way and this one going this way. I don't want that. I want them to go the same direction. So, and I need to look here because it's going to go like this. So I need to cut that going the that direction. So both ends are going the same direction. There we go. And you can see it. Now for me, everybody has their choices, but for me, the best way to adhere this is tear and tape. This is a magically fun uh, tape because you just pull it off. Oh, am I out? I'm out on this. Well, it's really magically fun. Let me grab another one. Do I have another one handy? Please tell me I have another one handy here. Ah, uh, yes. So, because you can tear it and it's sticky on the, it's a double-sided tape. So don't get caught up too much in trying to get it all the way to the edges or whatnot. Use your take your pick tool. And this is my favorite way is I just go here in the center kind of rub that in, use that little pokey end, and it's a little harder. It's easier on paper than it is on ribbon because that pokey end kind of wants to get in there. But come in like this and just pull it away. All right. So let's So bring. cool. Isn't it neat? Thanks, Bill. He's been really supportive all week, you guys. He's been, he just thinks this is the best card. It is really nice. Okay, so now we have it there. Now I want to take this uh, season of cheer that we embossed, and now I'm going to grab the mini. So I've got this here, and if you put um, a, a mini dimensional on these, it tends to kind of come off of the ribbon. So I'm going to do this, the minis, right on these edges because that's where it's going to stick and adhere the best to the um, DSP that we're putting it on. And it's going to be over where that ribbon is, or mostly. Um, you know me, I over-dimensionalize, but no sag, right? So then bringing my little... Are they liking it? Are they saying anything? Yeah, they are they love the card. Wow. Okay. Um Good. I was hoping this would like inspire you. Okay, so here we go. Right there. Right? Yep. I think it's so pretty. Oh, like this is this is one of my favorite holiday cards. So then I'm gonna come back. What did I do with those? Here they are. Ooh, with the now, you would think that since I did the copper clay that I would do the copper. I'm going to use the smaller, actually, on this one. But I'm going to use the gold. I chose the gold specifically because we've got copper here, and the gold really complements that. So who, who has ever heard of a gold snowflake? No one? That's okay. Me neither. But I'm telling you what, they work on this. And we'll put one, like, here... And let's put one there. You want to do odd numbers because it's supposed to be aesthetically pleasing. That's the only time I ever get to use that word, aesthetically. aesthetically. <laughs> so, and these again are the adhesive back snowflakes. So the, these snowflakes, this DSP, the bundle, the stamp set and the bundle are available tonight at midnight mountain time. So let's just take a look at this. Isn't that cute? So cute. Now, another tip. 
the reason why I made this so many layers, because you do need to know that is a sixteenth of an inch there in paper, is because since I hooked this this way, and I've seen people who have hooked them underneath here, but I didn't do that because I wanted a smooth surface to write on. I didn't want to have to hit a bump. So I hooked it in the back. You don't have to. And I did get a little schmutz, so I should use my... Schmutz remover? Yeah, this is... Sometimes when you over glue, you know, these things are great. I love them. Okay, so what do you guys think of this? It's got the bling on it. It has the fun of opening it. And look at this. That's why I did that, because if someone wants to set it out... It could go either way. It's so pretty. I think it's just adorable. And guess what? If you share my video to your wall this week, this goes um, for the drawing next week. So Ooh. these will be the cards that I'll be giving away next week. And I'm going to use the other two pieces of paper to make two more. So somebody might be getting, I never know who gets what when I do my um Christmas cards. I just, they're in order as I make them as I go throughout the year, and then I just pull them out and start sending them. So, someone might get one for a Christmas card this year. Okay, be sure to like and follow us. We're on YouTube, and if you're watching me later on YouTube, I will have a link in the description area for you to um, uh, find my online store. I want you guys to know, there is a clearance rack refresh. What will be on it? I don't know. I won't know until you guys know, um, but I will be looking at it. <laughs> um, sometimes at they... 1 o'clock our time. Yeah, I don't know what the discounts will be, if they're going to be deep discounts. I don't know what it is, but it will be there, so there is a clearance rack refresh coming. Um, we've already talked about sign up for my newsletter. Okay, my computer went kind of crazy, but I wasn't going to reprint it. There is a promotion this month starting tomorrow. If you order $50 or more in my online store for every $50, you're going to get a $5 coupon. For every $50, they're going to mail you a coupon. It'll be an email form, so you want to watch for that. Those will be for you, you to redeem in August. So if you guys think about that, $50, 5 bucks, that's 10 that's 10 right there. On top of if you buy the bundle, that's 10%. And then on top of some other promotions that are going on. Um, also, that counts if you buy stuff off the clearance rack. So you're getting a discount off of that, plus you're yeah. earning another 10% off for you to use in August. So... That's pretty awesome. I have my own specials going on, which I'm calling the Summer Sampler Pack. So let me go through this. If you purchase $80 through me using my current host code, you're going to get two um, Stampin' uh, Piccadilly Perks rewards, which is, I'll explain perks in a moment. Um, but if you spend $100, you are going to get two Piccadilly Perks. You're also going to get the DSP Sampler Pack, and you're going to get a package of embellishments. So that's pretty good. And if you really want to know, if you want to really make the most of your money, because that will also give you two $5 coupons from Stampin' Up!, but if you do 105, you get an extra perks reward for me. So um, that's just another way to earn some money. That's not through Stampin' Up. The online exclusives do hit um, tonight at midnight. Now, last week's card that um, I think Laura and Beverly won is using this online exclusive, the Timeless Charm, which, again, that bundle, you save 10% if you purchase it, purchase it in the bundle. And there's going to be more. Um, I know that probably... Australian demonstrators are probably seeing it by now. I said I'd explain the perks to you. So for every $35 that you purchase in my store, and I know that other demonstrators have different perks rewards. I know that my upline does like for every $50, then you get a, um, a $25 purchase. So for every $35 for the name Piccadilly, there's 10 letters in Piccadilly. Once you earn all the letters in Piccadilly, you get a $25 shopping spree on me, but then I pay the shipping and the handling. Now I will let you save that up until you get two of my 
perks $25 rewards. That way, with a $50 purchase, or with a, you'll get a $50 shopping spree. And then it, once you earn the 50, then you do need to spend it within 30 days. Um, also, any orders that you are placing that are under um, $149.99, those, um, please use my postcode because that's the only way you get my perks rewards or my um, embellishment reward or my, uh, what other reward, the DSP sampler pack. So, and this is the current host code. And if you don't like adding it, all you have to do is go to my Piccadilly Stamping um, page on Facebook, and there's a shop or there's a link that I have at the top. The pinned post will have my current host code. If you click on that link, it'll add the host code for you every time you can shop from there. So I hope you guys had a great evening. I hope you enjoyed these cards. I think they're fabulous. I think Bill thinks they're pretty fabulous. I so, do. yeah. So, you guys have a great evening. We will see you next week. Um, although, for my uh, pearls and for my um, VIP group, you guys are going to have a demonstration this coming Monday. So, I will see you next week, Wednesday, 7 p.m. Central Time. Have a great evening. Bye. Bye.